Hello everybody, in this lecture we will be solving 2008 IMO problem number 6. Here's a view of this problem. A, B, C, D is a convex quadrilateral with B, A not equal to B, C. And we have the incircles of A, B, C and A, D, C. We call them uh, W1 and W2. Suppose that there exists a circle W or omega if you will. Um, which is tangent to four lines, namely the uh, ray BA uh, at this point here, which I can call simply as E, um, at the ray BC, uh, I can call this one as F, and so on. <clears throat> uh, for instance, this one I'll call L, and this one I'll call it as K. So, so, so the circle omega is uh, is tangent to those four lines. If that's the case, huh? Um, prove that the common external tangents of omega one and omega two intersect at omega. So basically, the question is telling us that um, if uh, we find the common tangency, um, let, let's say between these two uh, circles, like probably something like that. And the other one, I guess, something like that. These two common tangents uh, intersect at on the circle omega. So that's what needs to be proven. So let me actually erase that. But that's kind of a, a very neat question. And it's one of my favorite, favorite questions, actually. Um, so we will be um, the reason it's kind of a favorite is we will be repeatedly applying homotety dilation with respect to different points on the figure and uh, hof hopefully the, the things will work out beautifully as a result um, before i begin due to this special uh, situation where the quadrilateral ABCD is such that you there exists such a circle omega warrants that uh, ABCD have some special uh, length and have some special property. So uh, let me go ahead and first uh, identify this property. I will use the equal tangents uh, theorem. Uh, obviously BE and BF are tangents from point B to the circle omega. As a result, it must be equal. So BE is equal to BF. But then uh, I can rewrite BE and BF as follows. So I will rewrite BE as BA plus AE. BA plus AE. And I will rewrite BF as BC plus CF. BC, oops, BC plus CF. Now, uh, I just realized that AE, huh, this expression here, is equal to AL because of, again, um, another application of equal tangents from, the, uh, from, the, from that theorem. So, therefore, I will just replace AE in, on the left-hand side with AL. And on the right-hand side, I keep the BC, but I will go ahead and replace CF with CK because they are equal lengths. Finally, finally, um, I can recast this as, um, well, noticing that AL is equal to AD plus DL, huh? so I'll rewrite this as BA, so I'm, I keep BA intact, plus AL, I split it as AD plus DL, and that thing is equal to BC, I'll, I'll keep BC intact, but I will split CK as CD plus dk now we know these two expressions are equivalent but l when you look at it you just realize that dl and dk are equal from equal tangents so i can get rid of these two and finally i i i found the uh, a very nice result which is that uh, ab plus ad so is equal to bc plus cd so this will turn out to be a hugely useful uh, result for me. So let me mark this as uh, number one here. 
And then uh, I would like to uh, identify, uh, oops, I probably went too far low. Um, so I would like to identify uh, these points on AC as P and Q, right? So I'll call this point of intersection between omega 1 and AC as P, um, probably like this. And the point of intersection between omega 2 and AC as Q, oops, um, as Q. Now I would like to find out a relationship that would somehow relate AP and QC to each other. For that I would like to recall a formula quickly. So consider, so let me open a, a kind of an imagination box. Uh, consider any triangle ABC and ABC has this in circle ABC. We know that because of the equal tangents, this is x, x, y, y, and z, z. So what I want is to express x in terms of the side lengths of triangle ABC. And I, I guess you would remember that, um, uh, for instance, let me see, let me see. So if s is the semi-perimeter, which ends up being x plus y plus z only, half of the perimeter, um, we just realize that x is just, and noticing that y plus z is equal to a, right? So therefore, this implies that x is in, simply equal to s minus a. So if I apply this analogy to, um, to, 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 the, to the triangle ABC, huh? consider triangle ABC. On this triangle, AP is simply equal to, uh, uh, and here we can do a small trick, S was uh, simply uh, A plus B plus C over 2 minus A, so that would give us B plus C minus A over 2. So therefore, AP is simply equal to uh, 1 half of, uh, notice um, the way it goes, huh? so B and C are um, the lengths, which contain x. So as a result, so the lengths which contain AP would be um uh, would be AC. Um, yeah, so AC and 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 uh, AB. So therefore, I will get AC plus AB minus BC. Um, I can do something similar for triangle uh, ACD. ACD. For that case, I will realize that CQ is simply equal to one half by the same analogy, um, AC plus uh, CD, AC plus CD minus AD. Now, at the last step, I would like to recall this identity that we got earlier. So let me remind you of this identity we got for from one. We know that AB plus uh, AD is equal to uh, CB plus CD. So if I rearrange this, I will get uh, AB minus uh, BC equals uh, CD uh, minus AD. So the reason I did that is that because look at these two expressions. Huh? So these two expressions are equal eh, because of the fact one that we just got early on, on in solving the problem. So as a result, the rest of the problem and eh, the rest of each component are the same, suggesting that AP is actually equal to CQ. So going back up, so therefore I recognize that these two lengths are equal. Now this gets me to a very special configuration. In fact, huh? um, you guys remember the diameter of the in-circle configuration uh, popularized by Yufei Zhao. Um, so what, it, what this implies is that if you consider triangle ABC, in fact, uh, P is the tangency point of the in-circle with side length AC, but Q is the tangency point between the X-circle, actually it is the BX-circle, BX-circle of triangle ABC and the line AC, right? So let me repeat, Q is in fact not only the tangency point between omega 2 and triangle ABC, but it's also the tangency point between triangle ABC and the BX circle of that triangle ABC. So, due to Euphasio's lemma, if uh, you consider the point opposite 
P on the other side of the in circle and call this point as oops sorry for that oh. okay so if you call this point as p prime what the lemma tells us is that um, these three points are collinear so remember okay so this is i1 the in center all i did is p p prime is the diameter of omega one um, and as a result, B, P prime, Q are collinear. But by the same token, if I focus on triangle DAC, uh, because CQ is equal to AP, the special configuration reminds us again that P is the DX circle of triangle ADC. So therefore, if I look at the, um, uh, at the point diametrically opposite point Q, so probably here somewhere and I call this point as Q prime so I don't have enough space here so let me just identify Q, oops, uh, Q prime so then I know that uh, D Q prime P is collinear as well like that so we have two um, collinear points, uh, two, two sets of collinear points. Let me write them here, probably on the circle because I won't need the circle. Uh, B, the big circle, B, P prime and Q are collinear. And we got it from the first result. And secondly, D, uh, Q prime, P are also collinear points as well final step consider a point t on the circle omega uh, such that the tangent at t is uh, to our circle omega is parallel to ac so probably um if i draw a parallel line like to ac so probably something like that um yeah it looks pretty parallel so if you call this point as t now I would like you to focus on the homotety centered at point B that would answer the homotety um, centered at point B. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the homotety centered at point B that sends omega 1 to omega. <coughs> so the in circle of triangle ABC to this large circle omega outside. So this homotety, I claim, uh, will do uh, quite a few uh, nice things for us. First of all, it will send the point P prime to T. Okay, so HB P prime, I claim, is equal to T. If that's true, it, it means that not only B, P prime and Q are collinear, but all four are collinear. B, P prime, Q and T would be collinear. So why would that be? So... Um, P prime is sent to T. The reason is very simple. Remember that P prime by construction is opposite on the diameter of the in circle omega 1 to P, right? So they are opposite ends of a diameter. As a result, the line AC, the tangent at P prime is parallel to AC actually. So if you draw a tangent at P prime, it's parallel to AC. So therefore, the two circles which are in homotety, omega 1 and omega, you have two corresponding points which have equal tangents, well, um, tangents which are parallel, I should say, uh, would imply that P prime will be mapped to T, and as a result, these, uh, these uh, T is collinear with B, P prime, and Q as well. So T is probably something like that. So that's a really neat result so not only b p prime and q but i can add t to that list as well but by the same token i can also concentrate my attention on the homotety centered at point d uh, which would map omega 2 to omega as well so consider this homotety and i claim that uh, under this homotety uh, center that D, uh, which takes omega 2 to omega, Q prime will be mapped to T. Now notice that uh, for this homotety is slightly different than the homotety center at point B. The homotety center at point B has a ratio, a positive ratio, versus the one center that D has a negative ratio because it takes the omega 2 
and it's, uh, it reflects it onto the other side of point D. As a result, the ratio is negative, but the, the, the main idea remains the same. Notice that the tangent at Q prime to the circle omega 2 is parallel to AC as well. Why is that? Because um, Q prime is diametrically opposite of uh, Q uh, in, on triangle omega 2 and as a result the tangent at Q prime should be parallel to AC. Um, so therefore, therefore it is no surprise that HD would take the point Q prime and it will map it to point to the point T and as a result T is collinear with D and Q prime as well and we have this really nice result. Um, yeah, let me just add these 90 degree angles as well. Now, uh, so, so I can extend this line as well and it will definitely meet at this point T again on the, um, on, on, on the circle omega. And now for the final step, I claim that, um, I claim that T is actually the center of a third dilation, uh, that would simply uh, take uh, omega 2 uh, to omega 1. So that's the final dilation that I would like to focus on at B. So how can I prove this claim? Uh, well, notice that um, um, obviously P Q prime T and P prime Q T, they are uh, collinear. Huh? So P Q prime T is collinear and P prime Q T are collinear. Moreover, Q Q prime is the diameter of omega 2, P P prime is diameter of omega 1, and Q prime is mapped to P, obviously. Q is mapped to P prime. So these diameters are also parallel to each other, right? So this is, so, so I, I, I hope I'm making sense here. So QQ prime is a diameter and it looks like it has been mapped to PP prime because they are parallel to each other. Two parallel diameters will be mapped to each other uh, under this dilation centered at the point T. And, and that's it. So um, this, um, this proves that um, T is in fact the center of dilation that would take omega 2 to omega 1 uh, with a po positive ratio. As a result, the, um, the, the tangents to the two circles, uh, if we draw them, they would have to, um, due to the homotety, they would have to meet at the point T as well. And that proves uh, this beautiful um, result. As I said early on in, uh, um, in, in the problem, uh, this is one of my favorite problems. And I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, make sure you understand the logic and in particular um, the, di the, the, the dilemma of Yufei Zhao, uh, the diameter of the in-circle and how uh, the, the uh, diametrically opposite point to the uh, touch point of the in-circle uh, is collinear with, uh, with the vertex, the opposite vertex and, uh, and, and, the, and the point where the x-circle intersects the triangle. Okay, so I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and see you in our next uh, lecture.